topic of the day, wheel wells. More specifically, the two types of wheel wells that become a problem for most guys. I'm amazed at how many guys have written in and wanted to know how does Darren clean or deal with the carpet lined, felt lined, fabric lined, you can call it whatever you want, but how does Darren deal with those wheel wells? So this particular version, this is on a Range Rover, and I picked this because this actually represents two types of the most common wheel wells. That is a plastic line and then a felt lined wheel well. The plastic line, I think everyone has a master on that. I simply spray it with some degreaser. I pick one of my typical wheel well brushes that can be used for virtually so many things when it comes to detailing. I scrub it, I hose it off, then I blow it off with a blower. In my case, I use an electric leaf blower. Yes, you will find links for all these things at the show more box below. So that's pretty straightforward with this. The next step, once it's dry, is I simply take and pay no attention to this bottle. I simply used it because it was a sturdy bottle because I mix my wheel well dressing separately than my other dressings. This truly is an area you do not need to overthink when it comes to choosing a dressing. I pick a low budget dressing. All I'm chasing is a shiny, uniform appearance on the plastic wheel well itself. Why do you even want to detail a wheel well? Well, is it not in fact all about the details? So when you pull back, and I play this game with some of my customers, because they pull back after I've finished detailing one of their cars, and they will have the wow factor. And I ask them, okay, what exactly about that car makes it so spectacular, makes it so filled with wow? And they'll list off the obvious shiny paint, clean wheels, clean windows. But then I ask them, well, specifically, what is it? And then they, that's where they are usually stumped. They don't know where to go past that because their eye, even though it can sense that the details have been nailed, they're unable to pick out and scrutinize the specific details. This is where the wheel wells come in. That is one of the specific details that you can either get correctly or miss massively. It is up to you. Because when you pull back and you start scrutinizing the car or you just pull back and you make a casual observance, it's either going to ring success, clean, detailed, wow, or it's gonna be like, oh yeah, that's clean, that's nice. We don't want that. We want the wow, we want the spectacular factor whenever we detail a car. Wheel wells is certainly a way to achieve that. So there's the plastic version. At this point, I'm simply going to spray and you just lightly mist it and you leave it to be. If there's any white showing up, it will dissipate and it will turn into a clear, shiny appearance that's uniform in nature. I strategize when I do this because whenever you spray and mist anything into the air, whether there's a wind current or not, you can guarantee that that overspray, that mist, whether it's, when it's shooting into the air, there's gonna be a small amount of that that's going to float and land on surfaces and areas that you simply do not want. So you need to strategize as to what part of the process of your detailing process you want to put this into. So I'm very selective as to when I do it so that I can address any overspray that is floated down onto the paint or the windows after the fact. You don't wanna repeat your steps. So the more critical point is how does Darren deal with felt lined wheel wells. There is no simple, one process works in every situation. It literally is a case by case situation. This is where you as a car owner, a detailer, you need to pull back, gather in all the specific nuances of the moment. Is it heavily saturated with debris that's dry and loose and is clinging to life sticking to that wheel well? Or is it saturated with thick mud because someone's driven it or it's been driven in the snow, rain, that's where you have to respond. So let's start with the worst case scenario, which is it's heavily soiled with dirt and mud. That's where I would simply hose it out. If you have a pressure washer, that's gonna be your ticket. You hose it out initially to eliminate all the chunks. Then I'll spray some degreaser on it, all purpose cleaner. After I've hosed it out, then I can reassess. Then I can come in with one of my typical scrub brushes that are used for so many purposes from wheels to tires to wheel wells. I like to keep a dedicated brush specifically for wheel wells as they tend to get very dirty and I don't want to transfer that dirt to other parts of the car. So pick an all purpose cleaner, a degreaser, whatever works for you. Keep it simple, spray it, agitate it, hose it out. Now comes the real trick. Now when you pull back and you allow it to either dry or dissipate for a while, it will reveal all the particles that are clean to life. So my personal trick is two things, is I will pick a suitable bottle brush. You can also use what's called a toilet bowl brush, believe it or not. Now whether you decide to use a used toilet bowl brush or a new one is up to you 
and your world. I prefer new unsoiled brush of some kind. These are bottle brushes. Now what you'll find virtually in every part of the detailing world is that not all brushes are created equal. Some are more rigid, more stiff, softer, gentler, easier, friendlier. Anything goes when it comes to brushes. This is why if you walk into a, a service shop that works on cars, you will find the typical mechanic will have thousands of tools. And most of you that don't live the world of mechanics would look at that as completely overkill. And you think, dude, why do you need so many tools? Well, anyone with experience will tell you that the right tool can make your world. The lack of the right tool can also break your world. That's why it's critical to have the best tool for the exact moment that you have encountered. In this case, it's felt lined wheel wells. So I like these. Now I did recently another video where I have a third type because this bottle brush is not as stiff as this one. Some of them will have more bristles. Some of them will have less bristles. So I want to find the perfect bottle brush for the moment. Now I use a bottle brush instead of one of these brushes because I can be a little more more precise and reach tighter areas that I cannot reach with this type of brush. Also, I did a video where I'm using a bottle brush to clean the door jams. That is a softer bottle brush than these. I do not need to worry about, unless I'm being crazy and I'm not using this moment to go crazy on you, but I don't need to worry about damaging the felt on the wheel well. So I can use a stiff brush that is aggressive enough to break loose the debris and fibers that are stuck in that wheel well that's making it look unsightly. Because ultimately what I'm trying to achieve is a uniform appearance by cleaning away all the dirt, mud, debris, then we can move forward from there. So I will get in here with water and I will scrub, scrub, scrub after I've done the initial douching of the wheel well. That's where I pick the appropriate bottle brush that can access these tight areas and it breaks like that. Welcome to the world of detailing. So this one, and that's why I ordered five different bottle brushes when I was searching for the best one. This one will screw on and off here and it will tend to loosen up and then break apart when I go to use it because I, I, because I failed to check it. As a rule, you want to do a visual inspection on all your tools before you actually go in hot. I failed to do that. This bottle brush is secure. It does not screw off. So that's where you have to tweak the nuances so that you can find the winning balance for you and your world, which is why as a mechanic, I will carry with me many, many tools designed perfectly for the situation that I encounter. Now the bottle brush that I used to clean the door jams was a softer version it did not unscrew at the top and it was effective for the door jams where I wanted to be a little more concerned with the paint finish of the door jams, but obviously not as concerned as the paint on the exterior of the car. So my real trick with wheel wells, felt lined wheel wells, really is something as basic as a microfiber cloth. Do not use a standard terry cloth rag or a diaper. Pick a microfiber only. Why? Because these do not lint up like those cloths will and can do. You don't want to wipe it and find out that you just left 500,000 pieces of lint on your wheel well. Complete opposite of what we're trying to achieve. Reach for a microfiber cloth, whether this is wet or dry, I simply go in here and I use it to break up the dirt. This right here, if it's showing up, I don't know if it is. I have found when it comes down to the last nuances of dry debris and dirt, that a microfiber cloth is more effective than any other brush that you could reach for, whether it's a standard wheel and tire brush or a specialized bottle brush. But nonetheless, I carry all of them so that I can respond appropriately to the situation as it presents itself to me. That is my trick. At this point, once I have a clean wheel well, you actually can go in and dress it with a dressing because you're gonna have a piece here that's often vinyl trim that needs to be dressed because it is all about the details, right? And spraying it with a dressing will create a subtle level of shine that will not be present unless you do so. It will also help mask or camouflage the felt areas that have been kind of soiled at a permanent level with dirt and debris. It will kind of enhance that to create a, a subtle gloss that also camouflages the area. Those are my tricks to detailed wheel wells, whether they're typical plastic line wheel wells or felt line. In 20,000 words or less. Thanks for tuning in. And in the spirit of creating a win for both sides, you, me, and future viewers, 
Leave a comment below. Tell me if there's some trick that you use that will deliver superior results than maybe some of us are experiencing. So leave those comments below. And by all means, if you like what you're seeing, feel free to subscribe. And when you subscribe, there's a little bell next to the subscribe button. That will let you be alerted whenever I post a new video so you can keep tuning in to my latest tips and techniques from my professional world of auto detailing. We will see you on the next video.